Hey Dreamers and welcome back to a new video. You may already hear it, from now on I'm recording with a new mic. I finally got myself a proper one before I actually used to record with a headset that I won in a Rocket League tournament years ago. And yeah, we are back with a new tutorial. It's been a very requested one and here it is. In this video I'll explain and show to you guys pretty much everything that you need to know about creating foliage in dreams. In the background right now you see my scene Spirits of the Sacred Shrine which is one of my most lush and detailed scenes yet featuring lots of lots of foliage and I'll teach you how you can do this and much more as well. I hope you guys enjoy. First let me introduce and explain to you the four different ways in which we can create foliage in dreams. First we have drawn foliage. This means we use the paint flags to draw our own foliage. I'm showing you a few different examples of the ones that I created already. We can achieve very good looking results with this and it's probably my favorite of them all. Sadly though, especially for leaves and stuff like that, it's not really usable on a bigger scale and it also needs to be made physical to move. Then we have 3D sculpted foliage. This is used a lot for creating realism in dreams. It is, if optimized well, quite thermal friendly in most cases and it throws natural shadows. The negatives here would be that it's very hard to make it move and it's probably the most time consuming way. Next we have paint flex foliage, meaning that we use the paint flex we have to create mostly painterly or abstract looking foliage. The variety of looks that can be achieved with this is quite big and it's really nice to combine with your 3D sculpted world. MM keeps showing us with their creations how powerful this can be if you know how to use it. This is a bit like using brushes in painting and that's why it would be the most insane thing for creators to happen if they add more flags like a leaf flag. Let's hope this happens sooner than later. Now you may have realized that that was just three ways and you're right, but I will now actually hop in and show you how to create foliage starting with the last way which is what we see being used the most in dreams, especially by beginners. It's probably the most beginner friendly way. A little tip, it's always great to put a huge cube nearby in the background when using the move controllers. With this way we roughly sculpt some leaves by using a stretch sphere with a hole using soft blend to merge them together. You can take your time with this and once we're finished, we use the sculpture's tweak menu to increase the looseness and impasto and then apply a flag to our liking. I'm also quickly showing you what it looks like to make a bush with this technique, also playing around with the tweak menu settings. Some of the advantages of this is to have natural shadows, very thermal friendly and usable, as well as easy wind effects etc by increasing the wave and heart in the effects tab. Next we come to paint flex. And first I want to show you how I'm pretty much making the exact same bush by also scattering the flag, but we have a lot more opportunities in changing the visual style with the paint flags. By the way, for foliage, I usually go for high roughness and waxiness. 
And as you can see, we can still use our effects to easily make it move as well as change the flag style. But what's the most powerful thing here is that we can stretch our flags and that lets us achieve completely different results. I also use this technique to create these painterly trees. Here I'm giving you a quick look at how you can use the flags to create these hanging plants by using the ruler tool and also make them move by making them physical. Lastly, we have another great option that I'm showing you by making some grass. In the clone tool, we can easily and fast spread our paintings over a larger scale. This way is also still thermo friendly. The only downside is that it doesn't throw shadows and for some of you probably that it will most likely look painterly or abstract. Now let's come to my favorite way. Self drawing foliage. This literally means we draw foliage in a 3D space, which is mind blowing enough but this lets us achieve incredible results. For this, a canvas or rather an underlayment kind of thing is our friend. We want to get out a cube that we can draw on basically. By activating surface snap, we can snap on it. And what's also a really important tool for this is the draw flex option, which is pretty much just pen pressure. It allows us to draw thicker or thinner lines the harder we press the back button. Once we have our foliage, we can just grab and put it anywhere, copy it around and fill our world with detail. Here I'm just showing you some more complex plants that I made and how we can make them move by making them physical. Sadly, we can't use this very often without getting warnings. You may wonder how we can even achieve such complex shapes for the plants. And don't worry, I'll show you how. For this, we still want to draw on a 3D shape. It's just a matter of closely looking at something that you want to create. Think about what shapes help you to achieve it. By slightly soft blending these four shapes together, I prepare a rounded shape which allows us to draw four leaves on them. Take your time with this, feel free to draw in some details like strings etc. And don't worry about the flex looking a bit funny here. We can change that by decreasing the impasto or giving our plant a quite solid color, which mostly looks better anyways. After we are finished, we can easily clone it around and create some lush worlds. Lastly, we come to 3D sculpted foliage. 
And here I straight away want to politely ask MM to consider working on a tool that works like merge paintings but for sculpts. That would save an insane amount of hours for sculpting individual leaves and foliage to prevent the gameplay turmoil from going crazy. And yes, this is the key to 3D foliage, which also makes it so time consuming. We want to sculpt as many as possible leaves or grass strokes or whatever we're going for in one single sculpt. One of the most important shapes for that is the curve tool. I've been showing in quite a few videos how you can sculpt branches and leaves and all of that. Here I would like to show you something a bit different. But first, the sculpture detail tool is also really important. Make sure to lower the sculpture detail when you are finished for a graphics optimization and sometimes even a better look. What I want to show you here is how you can speed up your process by using the Kaleidoscope tool. Be creative and find ways that make it better and easier. And let me know if you found some. We are still finding new things even after 3 years of the beta launch. Once we've finished our sculpt, it's really helpful to put them into a group for faster cloning and editing them all together. Just make sure to clone inside of the group, not the group itself, which will cause more gameplay turmoil increase. The last tip that I want to give you all here is to go out in nature and get inspired. Look at plants, trees, flowers and think about how you can take inspiration to bring this to life in dreams. I gave you all the knowledge and I think you are all set to go and create your own foliage now. You can do this. Feel free to send me your creations. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Zachary's Mind. And now I have one last little thing for you guys. Here's a first look at an original character that I created for a visual story that I've been working on. It's a very exciting project, soon more about that. And you can have a look behind the scenes now and support me at the same time. If you're interested in seeing the full uncut creation process of how I created this character and much more, you can now support me on Patreon, where I'm actively posting exclusive content now and it's also just a really nice way if you want to support me for all the effort that goes into producing these tutorials and videos for you guys. You can even support me with just a $1 subscription now and many many thanks to my first Patreons already, I really appreciate it. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, make sure to give it a like, some feedback and share it with others. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, definitely make sure to do so. I'll see you in the next video.